Well, yes, I was the director of the Aquarius Festival in 1973, and Johnny Allen was the director of the Aquarius Foundation. And we were the full-time, two full-time culture people within the Australian Union of Students back in 1972 and then into 73. My job was to produce the festival. Johnny and I had proposed that the festival, which was an existing festival called the Aquarius Festival, a kind of a gathering of um, undergraduate arts, you know, debating, uh, quarrel, drum sock, all those kind of things, used to come together on one camp, one particular campus, every two years. They had one in Melbourne in 69 and one in Canberra, ANU, in 73, 70, 71. So this was the 73rd one, but we said, as a result of our experiences, if you bring students together in these, those times, on a campus or in a capital city, Collectively, they protest, right? They had a lot to be upset about in those years with the Vietnam War and conscription. And we were saying, hang on, you know, what if we took it off campus? And uh, then we'd have to look inward. And by this time, we're, we're talking 1972, we had won the peace. You know, Whitlam was elected in um, November 72. And... Um, Troops were withdrawn from Vietnam. Conscription was ended. This was six years of protesting by students to protect their, to protect themselves from the random death of war. And uh, we won. So what was the peace going to look? That was our challenge at the time. Uh, so this was a radical idea. We'd have a festival without a program. It would be about countercultural lifestyles. Right. What had come out of the peace movement was the counterculture. It had so many dimensions to explore sociologically. And there were lots of people wanting new vision for things. They wanted to explore alternatives. Ideas were big in that generation. The whole Earth catalogue, for example, was on everyone's uh, coffee table in their lounge room. It was about ideas. I, possible futures we were looking at. And this was important for someone like me who was at university on a scholarship paid for by the Department of Defence Des Weapons Design Establishment. I was studying industrial engineering and I was heading towards making weapons or at least testing them. Anyway, that's what I was thinking. I, I didn't want to do this. We wanted to create a new world, a new world of peace that wasn't dominated by imperial wars. So that was on the agenda. That was cooking. And when we came to Nimbin, we found Nimbin, right? <laughs> and uh, Nimbin agreed. We had a town meeting up here and they said they'd host this arts, university arts festival on this new theme. So this time, 50 years ago, we were in, in Nimbin as students, volunteers, trying to cook this festival. Johnny Allen was a genius at cooking. <laughs> the cooking events. At the time, he used to talk about synergy, that what you do, what you make a magic in event, is bring two people together right, and expect not only the sum of the parts, plus the sum of the parts, plus this magic synergy of something you couldn't possibly imagine. So that's how we get things like the balls of Bengal and Dollar Brand on the same program. You know, it's a such diversity. And we pulled it off. You know, so what brings us to today? Well, lots of big changes. People were mightily changed by this experience. Their eyes were open to new possibilities in their lives. They went back to the universities, like the architecture students, for example, who helped prepare the site and build the saunas and the toilets and all this kind of stuff, the bridges on the site. They went back asking the question, after Nimbin what? What do we want from our lives? What do we want from architecture? And they were kind of, you know, those architects, they started talking about low-cost housing and Aboriginal housing rather than building tower buildings. They wanted to do something useful with their lives. And that was the, the feeling of the times. 
How can we build a future for ourselves? So people stayed in Nimbin afterwards. They acquired land um, to put MOs, uh, you know, communities we'd call them, communes, but they, they had variety of structures. Basically it was securing land for the future as cheap as possible. And the biggest one of those was Tunnable Falls, for which the uh, share price was, did I get it right, $200? Can you imagine that? $200. And with $200, you could occupy a bit of land at, at um, Tunnable. There were lots of committees, of course, and build a house on the dole, right? Imagine that, low-cost housing. These were the achievements of those days, the pioneering of Nimbin. There was one thing to do the festival, to create the dreams. It was the other thing to turn those dreams into community practice. And that's what followed in Nimbin in the years after. I came back to, to Nimbin, for example, with a group of, of Queries Festival people saying we were the, the reality construction company, turning turning cultural dreams into community practice. Enormously successful, the Battle of Terrania Creek, you know, all those things followed from that. So 50 years later, what's to be here for? Well, Nimbin's still the radical town it was. Um, cannabis law reform is founded, is grounded in Nimbin. And Michael Balderstone, who's the president of the Hemp Embassy there up the street, he and his partner, and the major organisers for the Nimbin Mardi Gras each year, they are also the drivers of legalised cannabis in Australia. I think it's got now six seats in the upper houses of Australian Victorian Parliament and Western Australia Parliament, and now one in the, in the um, New South Wales Parliament. How extraordinary that this little village, you know, only has 600 residents actually in the, the village boundary, should be the, the centre for organising a national campaign that's getting people into Parliament, doing all, much better than the Greens did when it was a young party. <laughs> but um, now challenges the Greens for the primary vote. Extraordinary. This is Nimbin. So the people up here want to remember their roots. So that's why there's been a big kerfuffle about 50 years of the Nimbin Aquarius Festival, kind of a salute. So what is it for me? Why am I engaged here? Why am I sitting in this shed that I've been given courtesy of the Hemp Embassy? It's an exercise in eldership is how I'm seeing it. Honourable eldership. And I think communities work much better when there are visible, respected elders. So I'm saying of the Aquarius exercise, that was an act of courage and vision. Right? I'm happy to be around to take salutes for that, you know, because I want other people to follow me as honourable elders. I want other people to put up their hand and say, I'm going to work for the future. I'm going to make this world a better place. Hmm? And do it.